Hi, I'm Julianne Cost. In the next few minutes, we're going to get familiar with Camera Raw's new masking features. We can select the masking icon or tap the M key in order to access all of the masking tools. There are two new tools, Select Subject and Select Sky, both of which make selections using artificial intelligence and machine learning. Next, we have our local adjustment tools, the brush, the linear gradient, and the radial gradient, and the color, luminance, and depth range mass controls have been elevated to their own tools. Now to the right of each tool is the keyboard shortcut for that tool. Selecting the brush displays the mask panel, which can be repositioned anywhere in the preview area or docked to the panel track. We can use the brush settings to change the brush size, the feather or the hardness of the brush edge, and the flow or the rate of application of the adjustment. I'll use the left bracket key in order to get a little bit smaller of a brush and starting at the upper left of the window, I'm going to hold down the shift key in order to constrain my paint strokes to either horizontal or vertical lines. By default, Lightroom displays a red overlay in the image area to show the areas that will be affected by the adjustment. If you ever need to change the color of the overlay, we can click on the red dot and select a different color. As soon as I use any of the sliders in order to make an adjustment, Camera Raw will automatically hide that mask overlay. To show the mask overlay again, we can choose the show overlay option or tap the Y key in order to toggle the visibility of the overlay or position our cursor over the thumbnail for either a mask component, in this case the brush, or the mask itself. Now, if I've painted in an area, say along the edge here, and I want to remove it from the adjustment, well, because I have the brush selected, I can simply choose the eraser. Then I can paint to erase that area from the adjustment. There are several different overlay options that can be selected from the panel. If we choose the white on black option and then tap the Y key in order to view this, it looks very similar to a layer mask in Photoshop. Where the mask is white, the adjustment will be fully visible. And as the mask transitions from white to black, the adjustment becomes less and less visible. Where the mask is black, the adjustment will be completely hidden. All right, let's toggle that off and set that back to color overlay. If I want to rename a mask, I simply double click on it. I'll call this window and tap enter to apply that. Now to toggle the visibility of an adjustment, I can click the eye icon to hide it and then click it again in order to show it, or we can click and hold to temporarily disable it. And when we release the cursor, we'll then be able to see it again. To add another mask, I'll click on the plus icon and choose linear gradient. I'll drag up from the window frame into the image area. In order to reposition it, I can click and drag on the pin icon. In order to increase or decrease the length of the gradient, we can either drag from the top or from the bottom. And to rotate it, I can click and drag on that middle line. In order to undo that, I can use Command Z on Mac or Control Z on Windows. Now we'll just make a slight change to exposure darkening it down a bit, and then increasing the temperature to remove a little bit of the blue color cast. So far, all of our masks have been made from a single tool. However, we can combine as many tools as are needed to create a mask. Let's say I want to add a little spot of light in the room. I'll select radial gradient, and then drag out from the center of the window, and I'll increase the exposure as well as the temperature. But we can see that not only is the interior of the room being affected, but so is the exterior, including this dividing line. In order to remove that from the mask, I'll want to choose subtract, select the brush, get a small brush by tapping the left bracket key, and then I'll paint over that divider. I'll then use the right bracket key to get a little bit larger of a brush and just paint around the windowsill in order to make sure that none of the radial gradient is being displayed on the outside of the building. 
On the masks panel, we can see the two components that make up the mask. We can click on either one of these components in order to select it in the masks panel, or we can click on the pin in the preview area. If we hover our cursor over the thumbnails in the mask panel, we can see the overlays for each one of the components as well as the mask. To view all of the mask pins, we can use the more icon and choose to show unselected mask pins. This makes it easier to move between masks because I can just select the pins in the image area. Each component of the mask can be edited independently. For example, if I select the radial gradient and I reposition it, or I resize it, or even if I rotate it, the brush mask is going to remain the same. Now to toggle the visibility of all of the adjustments applied to this image, I can click and hold the eye icon in the upper right of the masks panel. So there's before and after. With this next image, I want to start by choosing Select Sky. Camera Raw will use machine learning to select the sky and it displays the default red mask overlay. Let's decrease the exposure a bit, increase the dehaze amount, decrease the saturation, and increase the noise reduction to remove the noise in the sky. If we wanted to create a mask that adjusted everything except for the sky, we could easily duplicate the mask using the more icon and then inverting the sky component. We could then reset these settings and make any needed adjustments. If we change our mind, we can always delete a component by using the more icon or delete the entire mask. Next, I'll choose Select Subject, and again, Camera Raw is going to use machine learning to select the subject. Here, I want to decrease the exposure, increase the contrast, as well as increase the saturation. However, if I tap the Y key, we can see that not only is the castle being affected, but also this area down here. To remove that from the adjustment, I'll choose Subtract, select the brush, and then paint over the areas that I don't want to be affected. In order to add the chimney as well as this area here, I'll select Add, again choosing the brush, using the left bracket key to get a little bit smaller of a brush, and then painting over those areas that I want to be affected. I'll tap Y again in order to hide the mask. If I want to adjust a specific color range, then we can add a color range mask. We can use the eyedropper in order to select a specific color range, hold down the shift key to add to that color range, or click and drag in order to select a color range. We can use the refine slider in order to decrease or increase the range of colors that are selected. I'm going to change the hue and then decrease the saturation. But I want to limit the adjustment to the water, so I'll choose Subtract, select the brush, decrease the feather, increase the size using the right bracket keys, and then paint in the areas that I don't want to be adjusted. I also want to darken down the foreground, so I'll choose a linear gradient, drag up from the bottom of the image, decrease the exposure, as well as the contrast. Now in order to create a selection based on the brightness values of an image, I can choose to add a luminance range mask. I can use the eyedropper in order to select a brightness range. Here we've selected a light area, and we can see that reflected in the interface on the right, or I can click in a dark area, and we can see that the range has changed. Now the area within this rectangle is going to be completely affected, and I can expand that. I can even reposition it. For now, I want to affect the shadow areas, and I want to make the transition between those areas that are affected and those that aren't very gradual, so I'll drag the vertical line, this outer marker, to adjust that smoothness of the falloff. We can also choose to show the luminance map, or just hold down the Option key as we drag to show it. 
Now I really only want to affect the hills in the background here. So I'll choose subtract, use the brush, increase the feather, and then paint in the foreground areas so that I'm not adjusting them. Then I'll just slightly increase the exposure. I'll also increase the contrast. I'll decrease the saturation and then scroll down and increase the clarity as well as the dehaze amount. While the contrast is looking better, I need to adjust the colors. So I'll increase the temperature and decrease the tint. Finally, to create an off-centered vignette, I'll add a radial gradient, drag out from the castle area, reposition it a little, and we can tell by the mask overlay that the interior of the ellipse will be affected, so we can click invert or tap the X key, and then decrease the exposure and increase the shadows. Now to toggle the visibility of all of the adjustments that we've made, I'll click and hold on the eye icon, so that's before and after. Excellent, that wraps up this quick overview of the essential masking features in Camera Raw. I'm Julianne Cost, thanks for watching.